Jared Polin fro knows photo dot com photo of the week time so you're looking at a picture that is really dark it's of a friend of mine nick perry from the band sinai uh, more information on them coming up some point you will find a behind the scenes video of a photo shoot with these guys a new one so let's just run down how this was shot nikon d3s one two fiftieth of a second two point eight ISO 10,000 with the 24 to 70 2.8. Now, I would have loved to have had a 24 1.4 in this situation, but one thing that may have not worked with that lens is the focus may not have been quick enough to give me what I was looking for um, because that AFS is is fast but it's not as fast as you know a 2.8 lens in terms of focusing because those other ones have more glass and it's heavier to move them in and out so they don't move as fast the 85 14 the 35 i guess the 35 14 when that comes out same thing and the 24 1.4 but you're, you may be asking yourself well isn't this picture underexposed or something you know you you, you have a 250th of a second but what's going on why were you shooting at 10,000 ISO so yeah I get that asked a lot why are you shooting at such high ISOs when you don't really need to well in this case we needed to because in this really dark room where they rehearse if you don't bump your ISO up you don't get a fast enough shutter speed to capture motion and these guys are a rock band so they move quite a lot which brings us to this picture I froze Nick here i didn't know he was going to jump he just did this during rehearsals he threw it in there and i was ready for it and he's frozen he is frozen i probably caught him at the top of his uh top of his jump because there's one right before it let's see there he's in the midst of a jump did i freeze him here too no not fully frozen but you can see his feet moving which means top of the jump so it's great when you anticipate and you're able to freeze action at peak. It's called peak action. When the subject's at the very top, the apex of their jump or motion, before they come down, they actually stop. And if you capture that right there, then you're getting something that is really good. So how can I save this photo? Well, it's not shot in JPEG. Of course, it's shot in RAW, um, which allows us to bring it back. But why was I at 10,000? because I knew I needed a fast enough shutter speed for this action. Nick moves around a ton, and in case he throws in a jump like this, I needed to be able to freeze it, because I didn't want to set it up. So 2 50th of a second was going to freeze it. Now let's see what I can do to this image to make it better. Of course we know that it's already, you know, there's no color here. It's too dark, and depending on what angle you shoot at in this room, there's more light or there's less light. So we know it's a black and white, and I know that I need to bump my exposure. What happens when you bump your exposure? Well, you can already see that there's grain in the image, but we're going to bring the grain out even more because of this. But this is just the nature of what needs to be done for this image to make it work. When you're in dark situations, you can do that, or you need to do that, in my opinion. So contrast, I like bumping it up. I don't like it. You know, down here, down here at zero, it's flat. It's okay. I want some contrast in there. I'm not a fill light fan. Everybody knows this. Look what happens with fill light. I just, I just don't like fill light in this so i'm almost two full stops under so i'm i'm bringing it back i'm bringing it back and the image still holds up and it's at 10,000 iso so for the image to still hold up and look like this you may you may say zoomed in here that it looked at one the one that it looks like grain you know there's so much noise this isn't noise this is grain this is film grain and this is something that i used to shoot when i would shoot 800 speed uh, HP5 Ilford or T-Max or something like that and get grain. This is what this is what happens with grain. Let's see what clarity. They even have a grain slider here, but I am not a fan of taking that out because what it does is it softens the image. Uh, we could add more grain. Now, you know what's funny? You can't even add more grain because, it, well, you can, but it's already there. All right, so that's a pretty good correction in my mind i've got some clarity going i could always pull back this way but then it looks like he's glowing it's weird and he's just frozen there so it's not overkilled i didn't really change the black levels too much because that's what would happen when you're at such high as ISOs 
you know, the black's just going to change tremendously. But as you see, look, your white balance plays a role in your black and white images. Don't forget this because this, this can come in handy when you're playing with your image. So that's where I'm going to leave that. That's where I'm going to leave that. We're at a little over two stops. I'm going to pull it back slightly. And there we go. Let's look at it. So there we go. Nick frozen in... His feet are frozen. His legs are frozen. His hair looks to be moving slightly. But the guitar is frozen. His hands are frozen on the guitar when he's hitting whatever note he's hitting at the end of his song. So... Is it technically perfect? No, it's not technically perfect. But did I get the shot that happened and I was prepared for? Yeah, I got it. I was at 10,000 ISO at 250th of a second. And I had to cheat the system to bring it back in the raw. Two full stops. If I was two full stops down here, I would have never frozen him. So let's look at that. 250th of a second. Drop it. 125th. Drop it. 60th of a second. 60th of a second. He's not freezing. I'm not getting this picture. I'm getting a, I'm getting a motion blur that looks out of focus. So, would you rather cheat the system, bring back the raw file later, or have a blurry image that you weren't able to capture? I used what I had to make this work, so that's why I'm happy with it. 10,000 ISO, this is the only camera in the world that is capable of capturing it at 10,000 ISO with quality. Um, one of the best cameras ever. It's the best camera, I'll go out and say it's the best camera ever for ISO capability, or high ISO capability, which will be replaced when the D4 comes out, or maybe even some of the next lower-end cameras may even do better than this, but I love it. So there you go. There's my corrections. You can see it on the right-hand side. Nick, great band, uh, in it, one of the greatest guitar players around. You should be hearing more from him now uh, coming up, and that's really it. Jared Polin, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.